All right, uh, we're moving on to part two of um, I'm an Indoor Skeleton. So, without further ado, let's get to it. Okay. Okay, so okay, uh, the pelvic girdle. Okay, so last um, thing we talked about the pectoral girdle. The pelvic girdle um, attaches to the lower limbs of the spine. It attaches to the axial skeleton by a bunch of strong ligaments. Okay, it is much, much, much stronger. Okay, including um, the acetabulum. Acetabulum is a deep cup that holds the head of the femur. Okay, um, the lower limbs have less freedom of movement. Okay, so I'm not going to wave my head, legs above my head, and stuff like that, but they're far more stable than they are. And that's, we'll talk more about this when we talk about joints. But every time you have more movement, um, you have less stability. Okay. All right. Uh, the pelvic girdle consists of paired hip bones or coxal bones and the sacrum. Okay. So these form a ring. Okay. Uh, the coxal bones unite anteriorly with each other and posteriorly with the sacrum. So they form a nice little ring. Okay, that's why it's one of, the, one of the reasons why it's more stable. Okay. So there's a rotating hip. Okay. So um, <clears throat> the pelvic girdle is made out of three separate bones in childhood, the ilium, ischium, and pubis. Okay, so you definitely have to know what those three are. Okay, the bones fuse remain, remain separate names to regions of the coxal bone. Okay, uh, in the middle of all that is the acetabulum. Okay, the uh, acetabulum, sorry, acetabulum literally means vinegar bowl. Okay, um, for those of you that study chemistry, aceta is. Uh, is Two carbon vinegar, okay, acetic acid is vinegar. Okay, acetabulum, it means vinegar bowl. It looks like a small little bowl um, that the Romans used to use to dip bread in. Okay, so the acetabulum, let me show you what that looks like. Okay, so it's. Uh, there's the hip. Oops. Ah. All right, let me try one more time. That is a sethabulum right there. Okay. That is a sethabulum. It's a very deep thing. Okay. That's made from all three bones. Okay. All right, the ilium, large laryng bone, forms the superior region of the coxal bone. Okay, um, the ischium. Okay, uh, right now, as you guys are watching this video, you guys are all probably sitting on either your beds and or your desks. Okay, what you're sitting on is your ischial tuberosity, the, the part of the your bone that is like pushing against the chair that you're feeling is the ischial tuberosity. Okay, and then there's the pubis. Okay, uh, the pubis is connected to each other in the front, and that is the pubic region, right? That attachment is called a pubic synthesis. Okay, um, so here, uh, the pubic arch. Okay. So let's go over the parts of the ish um, that you have to know. Okay, uh, 
I'll start with the ilium. The ilium is here. It's a big flaring bone right here. Okay. Um, right at the edge of it is the iliac crest. Okay. That's the iliac crest. Let me switch colors. Okay. Uh, there are four sp four spines that are associated with the ilium. So this one right here is the superior anterior iliac spine. Okay, anterior inferior iliac spine. Right there, right there. Okay, on the back, you see you'll find the posterior um, superior and posterior inferior. I'll show you that on the on the next slide. Okay, um, that right there is the acetabulum. Okay, this hole right here is the um, operator foramen. Okay, and I'll show that on another slide, but or the label on another slide, but it's shown right here. Okay, um, what else can I see here? This right here is a pubic synthesis. This white thing right here is a pubic synthesis. What color is red? That's a pubic synthesis. Okay, this is a pubic arch. Okay, uh, the pubic arch is very important to, to, for a scientist in determining if a skeleton is male or female. Okay, most of the uh, bones are you know, really hard to tell if they're male or female. I think the skull, there's some way to tell, but um, that takes really precise measurements. The pubic arch, you know immediately whether it's male or female, okay? When you look at this angle, if that angle is greater than 90 degrees, it is female. If it's less than 90 degrees, it is male. Okay, the male one is about 75, the female one is 105 on average. Okay, so the, the way you do this, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll show you on the skeleton if, if there was one, but you know, um, I don't really have a skeleton in my closet. Okay, so use these two fingers. Okay, this is about 75 degree angle, and so if I can line up these two fingers if I line up these two fingers right there and right there that would be a male okay because I can't open it to 90 degrees if I can't okay I can use these two fingers see how much wider I can spread my thumb and index finger this is about 105 degrees if I can line this up on a female Okay, or if I light this up on a pubic arch, then it's female. Okay, this one is a female. Okay. Okay, this one is a male. Okay, and I can show you. See how much sharper that angle is? That is a male. I mean, if you can see my hand, you can see I'm lining it up right on the pubic arch right there. Okay, so male hip, female hip. Okay. Uh, just again, I, I said it before, but most of the models and most of the actual skeletons are actually males. Okay, uh, because they're better for showing little anatomical features. Okay, so here, from the side view, I can see the posterior superior iliac spine, 
posterior inferior iliac spine, and I can see this big indentation right there. That indentation is called the greater sciatic notch. The greater sciatic notch is important because your sciatic nerve runs through that arch. Okay. And here you can see the color is the same, so you can see all three bones. Okay, so you can see the acetabulum very clearly. It's actually at the very at the made from all three bones. Okay. Here you see the operator for aiming they find a label in this one. Okay. 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 Uh, so I mentioned female hips are different. Okay. Female hips are that different male hips, but since females have to give birth, okay, female hips are different. They have to be wider. Just simply put, the baby's head has to go through the birth canal. Okay. Okay, so the difference between male hip and female hip, the male hip is um, narrower, okay, longer, like deeper, okay, and heavier, because like the males have to support more weight, okay? So here, um, okay, so the female hip is an adaptive for childbearing, provides for more room in the true pelvis, okay? This is part of the best picture, okay? You can see the, the female hip. Okay. The much larger hole of the female hip, the much smaller hole of the male hip. Okay. Um, this also explains one more detail. Um, the femur, okay? The, the big thigh bone in, in the male and female. The, the male's legs are straighter, the females are tilted in a little bit, okay, because they have to start out wider, so they tilt in a little bit. Uh, this actually makes males more biomechanically correct when running, okay, which is only a matter of one degree, actually, but that one degree is, is, is enough to make males faster runners than females. So, uh, I'm sure some of you guys in the classroom um, can probably beat me in a race. In fact, most of the girls in the classroom can probably beat me in a race, but um, none of y'all can beat Usain Bolt, and he's a male, all right? Um, just because of the, the position of the hips and stuff, okay? Okay. Okay, uh, the lower limb, okay, the lower limb carries the entire weight of the erect body, so let's talk about the limbs, okay, so again, our arms do not support our weight, our legs do, so our legs have to be bigger and stronger, okay, all right, first mode is the femur, so let's talk about the important things of the femur, okay, so this is a head, okay, this is a neck, okay attached to this head is a little indentation okay called a fovea or fovea capitis the fovea of the head okay okay next we have the trochanters okay a tubercle is a big bump okay a trochanter is a bump on steroids basically Okay, and there are only two that are in the femur, okay? And they're right here, the greater trochanter and the lesser trochanter, okay? Connecting them is this crest, okay? Intertrochanteric crest, okay? Um, here, Okay, on the back of the femur, you see this line right here. That line is where a lot of your hamstring muscles attach, and that line is called the linea aspera.
Okay. Here you can see the condyles, the two condyles, the two curved surfaces. Okay. And above the condyles, the two big bumps where a lot of muscles attach, the epicondyles. Okay. The condyles will interact with the feet, uh, tibia. Okay. The the epicondyles is where all the muscles attach. Okay. Okay. Um, the patella. The patella is a triangular sesamoid bone. So let's go through what a sesamoid bone is. A sesamoid bone, okay, is a bone that embeds itself inside a tendon. Okay. The patella, all of us have. Some of us have other bones that embed themselves inside the tendons that are not really named. Uh, there's one in the back of the leg that's commonly called the fibula. Uh, fibula, okay? Um, and then there's another one that's usually inside this joint of your thumb right here. But again, those aren't named. So the only one you have to know is the patella, okay? Okay. All right. So leg, okay, the region of the lower limb between the knee and ankle. Again, don't screw that up. Okay, your thigh is not part of your leg. Okay. Okay. Um, the tibia and the fibula. The tibia is the more massive bone of the leg. Okay, it receives all the weight from the femur. The fibula does not. It is long and thick, like, and it, it it can't support any weight. Okay, it was it literally looks like a twig, and use it to support your body weight. It will snap. Okay, the tibia is longer and like bigger, like like you, if you look at it, it looks like it can support a lot of weight. Okay, okay, up here. Femur, tibia. The fibula actually does not directly connect to the femur. Okay? So this is your knee, and this is your patella right here. Like, it's been cut from the top, so it pops off, so you can see better. But, you know, usually it, it sits right there. Okay? All right. The tibia articulates with the femur at a superior end that forms the knee joint. The tibia articulates with the talus at the inferior end that uh, forms the ankle joint. Okay, the fibula does not contribute to the knee; it does contribute to the ankle. So let's talk about that. Okay, so here, here is your ankle. Okay, um, so let's point out the important parts. Okay, uh, I didn't ask you guys to know that much on the, the tibia. Okay, this big bump, tibial tuberosity. Okay. Going all the way down. Okay. The anterior border here, that's your shin. Okay, in case you were wondering. Okay. You have a big bump on the medial side called a medial malleolus. Okay. Uh, little hammer. Medial side, little hammer. Medial malleolus. Okay. That is the little bump okay, on the inside part of your ankle, right? So if you slide your hand on the inside part of your ankle, there's this big bump on your foot there, okay? That's the medial malleolus. The lateral malleolus is, again, you can see that bump on your ankle, okay? That's from the fibula, okay? In between the tibia and fibula is a notch, okay, called a fibular notch. It's where the head of the fibula fits into the tibia. Okay. All right. The tarsals, metatarsals, and phalanges. Okay. So let's talk about these bones here. Okay. So this bone right here. Okay. 
Okay. This mode right here is called the talus. It's not called the trochlea. I don't mess that up. That this curved surface right there is called the trochlea of the talus. Okay, but a lot of people put that on the exam, so don't screw that up. Okay. So the weight of the of the femur, or sorry, the weight of the tibia comes down on the talus, which then comes down on either the front part, okay, if you're on your toes, or the back part if you're on your heels. Your heel bone is called the calcaneus. Okay, so calcaneal region, calcaneus. Okay, this one. Okay, it looks. Oh, it is. Uh, okay, this one right here. Um, if you flip it upside down, it looks like a ship. So navicular. Okay, so same word from which we get the word navy or naval. Okay, this one looks like cube, therefore cuboid. Okay, the cuneiform are wedges. Okay, so from the top, they don't look like wedges, but if you look at it from, if you separate the bone, they look like slices of pie, okay? They form this wedge shape coming down. So the wedges, okay? Uh, medial side, medial cuneiform, lateral side, lateral cuneiform, and in the middle, the intermediate cuneiform. Okay, um, these five bones are the metatarsals instead of metacarpals. And again, you have to make sure you um, use Roman numerals. So one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, because it will be marked wrong if you use the uh, the uh, Arabic letters. Okay, or sorry, Arabic numbers. Okay. All right. So the toe has two for. Uh, Two phalanges, okay, so proximal and distal, and then the, the rest of them are exactly the same, okay, proximal, middle, distal. So proximal uh, phalanx one, distal, sorry, proximal phalanx five, middle phalanx five, distal phalanx five, okay. Okay, so now you can see that from this angle as well. Okay, so is this curved surface that's how trochlea. Okay, okay, uh, we'll skip arches of the foot. Okay, so um, we'll stop right here with this presentation. Um, I will generate a review in a little bit. Okay, uh, a PAL review for you guys in a little bit.